Jo, how's it going? Good, not too bad. How's everyone's weekend going? Alright, it seems my computer's okay now. That is good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. One thing I did f realize is... um. So usually what happens with the UV editor is usually I just pop it out. And like have it as like a separate floating window that I usually just put onto like another monitor or something. But um, I've noticed if I leave it docked within Maya, it's much faster. So I think that was kind of part of the problem. I don't know. I do it at work and there's no problem, but at home it seems to be different. But that's cool. It's, it works really smooth now, so uh, I probably should have just done that to begin with. Yeah, I don't know. It, um, I, I always undock it. I've done that for years. And I've never had problems really. I don't know. It's. I think it's more something wrong with my computer. Hey, what is this? Oh, it's the top bit. Yeah, it's much. It's much smoother now when I leave it docked. Yeah, PCs at work are always pretty powerful. I mean, we we don't really have time to wait on the hardware, so uh, yeah, we usually have pretty good PCs. Is that the resolution? Forty-five. Oh, that's roughly forty. Yeah, we usually have pretty pretty good uh, PCs at work. To be fair, I've done like transformers on not the best computer. <laughs> I didn't realize my computer wasn't that good at the time. And um, I still managed to get by, so it's not bad. If you can make transformers on a computer, you can kind of do anything at that point. But um, yeah, so we have, what are we up to? This is the eighth stream. So we have three more streams left, including this one, to wrap up and do the whole thing. So what I was thinking we would probably do today is kind of have like the base layout for the UVs. So everything we add from now on would be kind of just like icing on the cake sort of thing. What is this meant to be? Um, it's a vehicle I designed. It's a um, I kind of originally designed it as kind of like a uh, like a sort of racing, like a low flying racing vehicle. So that was well, it's only half the ship, of course. But this was the uh, the general idea I was thinking. Yeah. So since the stream is um. Oh yeah, I could say this stream is obviously sponsored by Autodesk, 
And uh, yeah, since the stream is sponsored, it means everything we have on, everything we use, I have we have to own. So I picked one of my own designs to build. But um, yeah, so how fast can you go? I got no idea how fast it can go. Fast. But um, yeah, so the original idea behind this project was to try and build a production ready mesh within 30 hours, which was, let's be real, super ambitious. But um, we are uh, pretty on track, I think. At least 25 kilometers per hour? Yes. <laughs> Much faster than 25 kilometers per hour, I'm sure. Yeah, so the vehicle itself, like the model isn't finished. We're kind of just getting it into a good state where like everything we add on top is kind of like, you know, icing on the cake sort of thing. Oh, I didn't work too well. The uh, the order on map is almost actually it's it's pretty decent. Sometimes it just it does questionable things though. But most of the time it's pretty decent. This. Oh. What do the numbers mean? Um, so the numbers show how, like, so if I show the texture here, the numbers show how stretched UVs are. So if I grab this piece here, which is this. I pull this, you can see how much the material is stretching based on the UVs. And it also shows, yeah, you, so you can see your UVs are broken pretty much. And it also shows the flow of which direction your UVs are traveling. So you'll notice like all, all my numbers are flowing in the same direction. And that's something you, you need to have for the texture artist because it makes it much easier like procedurally texturing this stuff. So yeah, that's what the numbers are for. They just um, make sure your UV is a consistent scale as well. So you can tell, you can tell obviously the scale of this and this is completely different. Yeah, so I want my numbers to flow up that way. So we can, um, we can check. Oh. We can check that the numbers are flowing in the right direction. Numbers are in. Yeah, if you um, if you're going to do this for a texture artist, you should definitely keep these things in mind because it'll it'll make their life much easier, and they'll be much more willing to work with you again in the future. God, what is that? Oh, you from uh, you from Charlie's stream? That's kind of funny. If you're making an environment, if you're making an environment, do the UVs need to be consistent on the whole environment or just each asset or section? Um, that depends. That depends on a lot of things. Depends who's making the environment. Like, say, for example, um, I don't know if I can bring it up on screen, but imagine like the the hangar we made for episode eight. Like the individual props themselves can have their own UV resolutions because they'll be textured in their own. Like, for example, say you're doing a crate, someone else will texture the crate in isolation to the environment, so that way it doesn't matter. 
but the environment itself makes sense for it to be consistent. Um, do models consist of multiple meshes need to be merged into one domain? So they don't need to be merged, but yeah. So the, all of these are different objects. You, you don't need to merge your things. The rig is what kind of uh, puts everything together. Oh yeah, I just realized who you are. You were, we were talking, that's right. Now I remember. But yeah, so say for example, the uh, like the hangar stuff we made for Star Wars, like the actual, the environment all had consistent UVs. Because that way we could use the textures a lot more frequently. But like the individual props were done in isolation. So they don't matter too much. Because if you think of the scale, like you think of a, like a huge massive wall and then a crate. If they had the same UV resolution, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't be able to put anything onto the crate. The crate UVs would be like a pixel. Whoa. So much uh, stuff. Yes, so rigging is who puts it all together, but we, we group it in logical ways. So for example, the engine body is that, but the engine body is made up of multiple objects. Uh, let's see. Yo, how's it going, man? So I'm thinking I might flip these, actually. Just to keep the bottom stuff blue. Yo, how's it going, man? Now you can... Now you can spectate me doing UVs. So what's this? So... This is the body, right? There's a sanity check if you use these. Um, I don't know. Let's see, our main body. Okay, so where's... That needs to be updated still. Yo, channel, how's it going, man? Yeah, as far as like merging objects together, only merge objects together if they're the same material. So say for example, uh, that makes other people's life much easier as well. So for example, we could merge all these panels together. You don't have to, but you can if you want. But I wouldn't merge this panel with that pipe because they're different materials. Also, if they have to move independently of each other, don't combine them. Oh, you think you have overlapping UVs? Um, like in... So, for example, in like studios, we have we do have that sort of stuff, but it's part of the check-in process. Like when you go check a model into the pipeline, it will tell you there's overlapping UVs. I don't know where that is in my like default, if that makes sense. I'm sure there must be some out there somewhere. Um, what are we doing here? Have we got the mech? Uh, the engine mech is... Whoa, okay. We've got lots of mech here. So... Yeah, I'm sure... If you Google something, I'm sure there, there must be something out there. So... 
Yeah, I don't know how, how fun and exciting today's stream is going to be. It's going to be a lot more organization stuff, which is very important. Like, this is probably just as important as making the model itself. Like, working in production isn't just about making models. When you say sub-D modeling, you're not referring to a sub-D model. Wait, what's a sub-DI model? Yeah, so when they texture it, they smooth it. The texture on top of. But we we just built the base mesh. They the texture artist is usually the one that smooth. Um, four, five, six, four. Okay, that's perfect. We can just bind these two together. Will there be anyone texturing the model? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I think Arvin was talking about it, maybe, once. That could be kind of cool. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, cool. You can't go more than 10. Just a heads up. So this, I've set my grid up. What's that? All right. I don't even know where this piece is. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, the model itself is kind of bad. Well, we don't see this. There you go, problem, <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> we don't see that part of the model anyway. Yo, Andrew, how's it going, man? Oh, I think I missed some stuff. Can we overlap UVs for similar objects? Um, you can. I personally don't think you should. Because it just takes... A, like, for example, with us in film, we don't have UDIM um, limitations. And it just... All it does is it takes away freedom from being able to texture um, specific things. So I think it's better to not, I think it's better to not um, overlap. Does it have subdivision surface at the moment? Yeah, this is all sub -D. I mean, it's not smooth at the moment, but yeah, these are, these are all built to be smooth. Yeah, take it easy, man. Thanks for tuning in. You're finally done with the week? Yeah. Yeah, we need to fix like these little holes and stuff later. But we can do that later. Let's do um I'm kind of organizing what we already have. Alright, so we have the body stuff. Oh main body. Just get this out of the way. I usually just throw everything in negative space and just leave this empty. Um, so, that out of the way. Oh, if people don't know about this, so. This here represents your um, the arrows on your keyboard. So if it's set to one, you can use your keyboard to move everything like one UDEM. This might take a while because there's lots of models we're moving at once. Perfect. All right, so we just move these up. I'm just gonna put them up there for now. I know that's way way higher than we need. So let's have a look what we have. What is this? 
Well, I think this is the thruster. Yep. All right. We'll just put the thruster out of the way for now. Yeah, it's going to be a bit slow because we have like almost a million polys selected. And we're, uh, yeah, doing a lot of stuff. So I'm going to have a row here. So I've got the panels here. I'll probably have like the body here. Like the body is just the large chunks. And then I'll probably have the mech here. So I usually always leave a second row based on left and right. And these are the body stuff here. I might put the thruster down here. Just because it's going to be by itself anyway. There. What is uh what's sitting in here? Oh the cockpit rubber. Um I'll move. So the general idea of like this sort of UV layout, the general idea of this is you have like your left and then your right, and then you just go every second row and you also do it by material. So we put all our paneling together. The thruster can go by itself there. And then we have like the body here and like the mech here, just so the texture ice is very obvious what is what. The reason we do that, right? And also we don't include any of the center group. So, we can duplicate our whole left side and then we can flip it across here to negative one, freeze it. Cool, and then what we can do is we can just simply grab all of these UVs. And then move them up once. And then when you grab your left and your right side, it's very clear what is a copy of what. And you end up with something like this. So this is the general idea. Of, well, this is me personally how I think people should lay their UVs out like this. So it's very, very clear what is a copy of what. Like if you want anything transferred to the right, the right side, like the texture wise, you just move it up. Super convenient. Um, you mentioned transformers earlier. I read that the shoe looks like a custom car shop. I don't know where you read that. <laughs> the studio looked like a custom car shop. I mean, there is a lot of kit bashing in film in general, especially Transformers. Do you consider textile density when you work on the Udems that the ship overall has? Yeah, so it all has the same uh, textile density. I just said it here. So the way I usually do it is I pick like the biggest piece, make it a full UDEM, and just put a checker on and see what the resolution is like. And if it holds up to that, I just get the texture density from that, and then I use that for everything. So everything has the same texture density. Because you want to keep it, you want to keep it consistent. And you want all the UVs to flow in the same direction. Oops. To be honest, I don't think, like with as far as modeling goes, I don't think you need to go higher than like two, level two for subdivision. Uh, there's no real point going above two. Unless you're using creasing, you need to go to four, which is one reason why I don't like creasing. And yo, I'm gonna get some water. I'll, uh, I'll be back in two seconds.
When you take a poly to sub D, it converts it. So it's technically not a polygon anymore. I didn't understand what you're saying, really. If you smooth it, it's still polygons. I don't... Yeah, I'm kind of confused what you mean. This is this is just like a standard sub D workflow. There's nothing nothing too crazy or technical about this. Grab a cube, mesh convert poly to sub DI. I don't even know what sub DI is. Where what? Where's this convert to sub DI thing? Or modify convert. I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's just subdividing it. That's just smoothing it. Yeah, right click. Uh, let's see. What are we looking for again? Uh, right click and do what? I kind of don't know what we're talking about. This looks like just subdivision level one. This is still just a polygon, right? Oh, I have no idea what the hell that is. I don't know why you'd even use this, though. I don't see the, the point of this. All I've noticed is I can't touch it. I don't know anyone that's ever done this. So I don't know the point of this. That clears it up? I don't know. I feel you've just confused me. I don't know what we're doing. I think this has just muddied the water. I don't know what we're talking about. What's all this stuff? Okay. Why do you need subdivision? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of. I don't know if you people, if you guys are. I don't know what questions you guys are asking. The point of having a sub D mesh is like you can have your nice low poly mesh, but at render time it'll be a nice high res mesh. But your original is still basic. It also means you can have like curved surfaces can be much lower poly, but then at render time it's a smoother surface. That's the point of sub D, working in sub D at least. You can keep your mesh low poly, and at render time, it's nice and smooth. You weren't sure I wasn't going to that sub D? I've never even seen that in my life. The modifier thing. And I don't, I've never seen anyone do it before. <laughs> I didn't even know that was there. Do you know if the texture artists work with sub D mesh and Mari? Yeah, they subdivide it. So the the Mar like in Mari they don't use they don't texture this they texture this. All right, what are we doing? Whoa, okay, this stuff is super broken. Actually, that wasn't too bad.
Howdy, do you have any YouTube channels to suggest to beginners in 3D, whatever the program? Um, I don't know. There's there's plenty of tutorials out there. Like, it's just, you can Google search, like, tutorials for any 3D package, and there's plenty of stuff out there. Oh, what have I done here? Oh. But um, yeah, for me, like for example, if I want to know things, I usually just look up my very specific question on YouTube and then whatever I find that answers it is what I'll, I'll look into. So I don't really follow any channels or anything like that. All right, let's do that. Yeah, I'm sure people in the chat can um can recommend some stuff. Yeah, so the, what they do is they texture the they texture the model as a subdivi subdivided mesh in Mari. But once they do that, they don't check that model into the pipeline. Like the original model was still the one that's in the pipeline, but when it's rendered, the sub D textures and the model getting subdivided will line up with each other at render time. Yeah, no worries. Damn, we, we super broke this mesh. It was a long time since I started learning Maya. So I originally learned Maya by, um, I think they rebranded now, but there used to be a website called Digital Tutors. So they had like a pretty decent, like, welcome to Maya thing, which is what I did like, like nine years, <laughs> nine years ago. I'm pretty sure they rebranded now. But there's, there's plenty of things out there. Oh, it's the other way around. Blue will say? Alright. Um, to be fair, I didn't really find a lot of their tutorials that amazing. But they're like... Because I came from Cinema 4D, right? Like, I already knew the basics of, like, 3D modeling. I just needed to know the program. So, it, they had a good tutorial for learning the program itself. But these days, you can find all that sort of information on uh, YouTube pretty easily. What do I think about that program? It's it's alright. It's another it's another program. Yeah, for sure. I think if you want to just learn the program, but you already have knowledge of a um, if you already have knowledge of three D, I don't think you need to necessarily pay for the higher end things. Oh. Wait, why did I do that? Yeah, for me, when I'm like learning things now, I usually, well, it depends what it is. Like, say, for example, like I wanted to get more into ZBrush, so I got like the Kiosk Masons tutorial because they specifically did hard surface modeling in ZBrush. Like, that's what I mean. Like, if I look for tutorials now, it's more niche 
to what I want instead of just a general welcome to the program sort of thing. So it's been a while since I've looked into like those sorts of tutorials. So I don't really know what's out there at the moment, that sort of stuff. I know Unreal has really good intro tutorials to Unreal. I was going through those for a bit because I, I know nothing about game engines. Learning topologies will mess you up. It's fine. It, it takes time. It's just, just another thing. Once you, um, once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. Oops. Like all you need to, I wouldn't like when it comes to learning to topology, I wouldn't worry about like doing crazy stuff first. Like just learn, you know, basic corner topology and stuff like that. Because the reality is, like, even the most complex shapes is still kind of just made up of very basic topology. Um. You don't know how to do complex objects? That's cool. Just uh, start with simple objects and... Um, just build your way up from there. Like I wouldn't worry too much about like making a transformer or something as your first, as your first thing. Just start with um, like the way I did it was, I would just build something around my room, like once a day. Oh, wrong one. Let's say for example, I would make my my mouse, or then I would make my keyboard, and then I would build my monitor, like. Because they're things you can physically pick up and hold in front of you. Um, all right, shells. Oh, why did it rotate it? Do you ever work on video games to max? Uh, nope. I, I wouldn't mind to though, one day. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, with the whole, uh, you know, the current situation, it's made uh, working in film a bit hard. So maybe, maybe Cinemax one day could be kind of cool. Sure. Arrows, thanks for the uh the thirteen months man, I appreciate it. Good good time to upgrade GPU? Oh you mean with the whole reveal you're talking about? Yo, how's it going man? Actually, I wonder if I could fit these together. Yeah. Skip RTX 20 series and go straight for 30. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, I'm still got a. I have a 1080 Ti. It's not too bad. It's well, it's not bad at all. But yeah, maybe I should look into uh, upgrading soon. What is this? Oh, that's the front. So how's the engine body? That's here. Okay. That's cool. We can just 
tag these on afterwards. Thirty eighty TI. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't really have any issues with my computer at the moment. So. You wait for the forties. Forty two. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait for that 4080 TI. Um, have you enjoyed doing this series and will you be open to doing more? Yeah, for sure. I um it's been pretty fun. We we got this done much faster than I thought we would, so that's kinda cool. I mean it's kind of just showing people what I do for a day job, which is kinda cool. Camera matching for three D modeling is important. Um, to an extent, like there are times we do need to line like scans up to um the photo reference. But to be fair, like if we really need to do that, a lot of the time, like layout will kind of do it for us. Like if it's a complex thing, because they have the tools specifically for that. Definitely shout out to Layout for that, because I I don't enjoy lining cameras up. It's not hard, it's just a tedious process. But I mean, like, I, I'll line cameras up for concept, like, to the concept I mean. But because it's concept art, we can usually be a bit more vague with it. Um, I heard that they are not making any TI models, that's why they're 3070. Oh, okay. Damn, the price jump between the 3090 and the 3080 is crazy. Is it twice as good? Oh, it's getting hot in here. We'll be back in a sec. Yo, how's it going, man? Are you in Australia right now? Uh, nope. I left Australia like eight years ago. Um, where's the centers of? Oh, okay. Do I go to SIGGRAPH? Um, I wanted to go to conventions this year, but. <laughs> COVID kind of happened. But I think they, they hold it. I think they did hold SIGGRAPH in Vancouver a few years ago. And because we w I was working at ILM by the time, at the time, and we were right next to it, we all got free tickets to go to, like, into it, but not, all to, not to all the talks and stuff. So my SIGGRAPH experience was turning up to the... Um, I walked into the recruiting section, I picked up a free muffin, and then I walked out. <laughs> that was that was my SIGGRAPH experience. Yeah, it's funny, right? Because you see all these, like, you see all these nervous, like, students, like, wait, like, lined up in front of, like, Wetter and, like, um, ILM and all that sort of stuff. And me and my other ILM colleagues, we all just walked straight in. We grabbed a free muffin at the table, just stood around for a bit, and then we just walked out. <laughs> and that was my SIGGRAPH experience. Because we didn't, we didn't have access to the talks. Like, the talks is where... Um, the, like, people go to SIGGRAPH for the talks, but we didn't have access to that with the free access we got. So I just got a free muffin, and that was about it. <laughs> Free muffin in the recruiter's booth, I know, right? 
it must be such an interesting experience, like being a recruiter and seeing like like your employees <laughs> just in the recruiting section. <laughs> that was good fun. So you only had access to the muffins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all we needed, the muffins. Like, they had booths, and, like, you can go and talk to the people and stuff like that. But, like, I didn't know what most of the tech stuff was. So I'm just like, okay, that looks kind of cool. Actually, my um the environment soup on Solo did a talk for the Clarice booth. So I went and sat in that one. That was kind of cool. But um yeah, I really wanted to go to I really want to go to um what they call them? like Sigraph and stuff this year, but uh yeah. Maybe in a few years. So body. It was so funny, right? It feel it felt kind of strange just being like someone in the industry just looking at all these like really nervous students. Like you could tell they're super nervous. Yeah, so Yeah, I think at the time I wasn't really that interested in like the tech side of CG. Like it was more like like it wouldn't have meant as much to me going to like the talks but it was still kind of cool it's also because we we worked right next to the um we worked right next to the where they held it so it was pretty easy for us just to pop out uh let's see what else do we need Ooh. inside we don't need this Yeah, today isn't going to be super uh, interesting as far as like modeling goes. It's mostly going to be like organization and stuff like that. But obviously, once again, this is just as important as the modeling. Because like no one cares if you have a good model, but you're, no one can use it. What's this? Oh, okay. There's that. That. Oh, it was the right scale. Which is you, that one. Sure. Damn it, change the scale there. How do you fix the issue from last time? Um, I don't know. I think one thing I did realize is um, my Maya runs much better when I have the UV editor docked into Maya itself. There's no overlap, it's fine. That's one thing I realized. Like, I don't know why. At at work, I don't have that problem. But, um... My computer itself, for some reason, prefers if I leave the UV editor docked in Maya itself. It, it's much, it's much, much smoother now. You always have any other mon- Yeah, I, I do that as well. I've done that for most of my career. I've had- I've usually had the UV editor on a separate monitor. But because I have an ultra wide monitor, it doesn't bother me that much leaving it all docked into the same thing. Yo, Wagari, how's it going, man? How long will the Autodesk arc last? Um, this is the stream 8 out of 10. So we have this one and two more streams left, and then we're finished. But um, yeah, the assets 
Looking pretty good already. <laughs> God, the, the hook emotes. So funny. Were you asking because you want some four guys? Oh yeah, that's right. We can do, we can do some four guys after the stream if people want. You had a weird issue where if you had the UV window minimized, I had crashes. That's interesting. You have four guys will spawn to the stream? Uh four guys wouldn't give a shit about my stream. Four guys they they can worry about like the people with like fifty K viewers. Is this part of the thruster? Oh it is part of the thruster. That's the wrong scale, I guess. I also changed some of my um I also changed some of my settings for streaming. So has it has the stream been like pretty decent so far? Okay, so what do we have left? What is this? Oh, that's all body stuff. Seems fine at the moment. I mean, to be fair, all I really changed was like the bitrate. Not the bit right. No, it was the bit right. I think you're leaving like the you. So, I think leaving the UV editor docked inside of Maya itself definitely has helped a lot. Because before I was struggling even with ambient occlusion and anti aliasing off. The fact that I can have these both on and it's much faster means it's probably better just to leave it docked now. Which doesn't bother me. I have an ultra wide monitor, so leaving it docked doesn't really affect me at all. God, I think ultra wide monitors are so cool. I can't go back to having dual monitors now. Wait, what's all this stuff? Oh, okay, that's that one. Like what? You still have the Japanese style tempo and stuff to do. Um, I'm not doing that at the moment. I'm actually doing zebra stuff at the moment. I'll show you guys what I'm doing in ZBrush actually. Over here. Oh, you can see right here. So I'm starting to learn like hard surface sculpting in ZBrush. Oh, yeah, that's right. My uh, my image view is garbage. All right, let's just open it in Photoshop. Where's uh? Let's open with. There it is. Yeah, we can do some more ZBrush stuff on stream eventually. Problem is, I don't really want to do ZBrush while I'm learning it because I just don't want to be backseated like so much. Like especially at the start. Like I want to get more comfortable in the program before everyone starts screaming at me what to do. I learned from the Blender experience <laughs> not to do that. Yeah, this is what we've been working on. Oh, I can close it. Got it. Yeah, this is uh, the first. Yeah, it's got a huge sword. This is what I work. This is my first week of. Um, Attempting to learn ZBrush, so it's going it's going not too bad Of course we have higher res images later, but yeah, we'll we'll do that eventually on stream Once I get more comfortable in the program before people start screaming at me um, so Yeah, usually I try to avoid ZBrush just because I just you know, the interface is quite intimidating and stuff like that. But I'm like forcing myself just to sit in it now. 
and <laughs> it's starting to get a bit better. I'm I'm getting more comfortable with it. Um, for controlling Maya, do you use a tablet? Yeah, I use a tablet. I use I use pen and tablet for Maya. I know that shocks a lot of people, but I I find it much more comfortable. So I think we have. Yeah, that's probably okay. I think um, it's up to personal preference, but I, I think using the tablet is best because it's better for your it's it's better for your wrists long term. That's one of the main reasons a lot of artists like I'm not kidding like a lot of modelers use tablet in Maya. It's not that uncommon. But yeah, of course, it's your personal preference. If you feel much faster in Maya, I mean not Maya. If you feel much faster with a uh, with the uh, the mouse, just use the mouse. But just make sure you um you you know maintain your your health with your wrists. Because we we do this, we you know we do this sort of th stuff like twelve hours a day. So uh, definitely look after yourself. But for me, for example, in Maya, I use these menus a lot and like if I want to go to multi-cut with, a, with, a, with a, a mouse you'd have to move your hand over to select it but with me I can just hold shift right click and then flick my wrist to the side and select multi-cut super easily Whoa. same with like insert edge loop I just selected insert edge loop by just flicking my wrist down like that so if you use the sub menus it, I think it's much faster just to use the, uh, the tablet. Now I didn't realize I had so much of this stuff already UV. That's super convenient. Once you get the muscle memory, pen is way better. I, I think so as well. I mean, it's not, to be fair, it's not as accurate. There are times where I'll accidentally misclick. But in general, I, I do think it's much better. Most, most people do use pen. Like even compositors. I, I know a lot of compositors that use uh, pen. It also means like going into ZBrush. Like it feels much nicer for me. Like if I want to swap into a ZBrush or something like that, like I'm still just holding the same thing. I don't need to put something down. I can just literally open the next program and keep working. But yeah, once again, it's personal preference. If if you want to use the mouse, then it you're not going to suddenly be a better artist because you've used tablet. Like that's that's the best way to look at it. Your wrists might thank you later, though. That's about it. Because that's how I originally started using it. Like I started at MPC and my leads were like, yeah, you should learn the tablet. <laughs> because they were like, yeah, we have wrist pain. You should avoid wrist pain. <laughs> so they told me to use the tablet. At, at the start, it was it felt awkward. But over time, I got used to it. Now this is the bottom right. Probably not going to be the end of the world if we just do this. Breakdancing? Yeah, breakdancing can also help. <laughs> If if you want to strengthen your wrists, learning break dancing definitely helps with that sort of stuff. So let's see. What do we? Is there an empty spot here? There is. Sick. Like, 
So what I'm doing, right, is I'm kind of, like, because we still have detail on that in, oh, it's barely sitting on the edge. So we still have, like, detail on stuff we need to add, but we're just setting up the ground for, like, the UVs now. So if we do add extra mech, for example, we still just have extra space we can just drop the mech into. It's not end of the world. The way I usually do it is I, I think about like the left side first. And I get that sorted. Center we can just throw at the top one we're done. For those who like to use a mouse, look into a vertical mouse. Yeah, I've I've never used one, but I, I know people do talk about them quite highly. You use your laptop touchpad? Oh my god, that sounds painful. I remember once I, I was building a Lamborghini in Cinema 4D on a plane with a touchpad. That was awful. I don't know why I tried to do that. Yo, we've been streaming for an hour, so I'm gonna pop to the restroom. I'll be back in a, a sec. Get up and have a stretch and stuff like that. How much is this uh this vertical mouse you guys are talking about? Your back is your main problem? Um before you turn twenty? Damn, alright, you should probably consider working on that. If you're concerned about your back before twenty, that's that's not good. Definitely make sure you like Get up and stretch and stuff like that. If you if you can get access to a standing desk, that will also help you a lot. Ooh. I 
Um, when it comes to hard surface and sub D, the topology is important, but if you're just doing a straight plane, should it still have those extra edges in the middle? Yes. Because it's it's not about the topology, it's about preventing stretching UVs. Like say for example, we have this cube here, right? Um uh, Uh, let's just do automatic, my point. That didn't do what I wanted. Alright, so we have something like this, right? If we... Wrong way. So we do this, right? If I subdivide it, you'll see... If... There. You see this edge here moves all the way over here. And you kind of, you don't want that. You get weird stuff like this. So the reason you put extra edge loops is to kind of prevent the distortion when it's subdivided. UVing is considered an extreme. I don't, I don't understand why people hate UVs. Why do people dislike UV so much? Yeah, so you put extra supporting edges so the edge the edges don't slide too much. The reason we put the extra edge loops in is to counter that. So for example, I would usually do something like maybe something like this, and then I put an extra edge loop there and there. So like the topology change of this, and I would also have one running this way. The topology change of this is much less than without those in the middle. That's that's the main reason we do that sort of stuff is to prevent stretching and stuff like that. If I was to model a PS5 control on average, how long should it take? I have no idea. I don't know what the PS5 controller looks like. <laughs> And it depends on a lot of things. Like, it depends how how good you want to make it, really. Um, what do we got here? Yeah, it'll probably just be a few hours for me, I guess. But I, I don't know what it looks like, so I'm not really going to comment on how long it should take. It, I wouldn't worry too much about that sort of stuff when you're starting out. Do studios pay for gym? Um, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why studios would pay for a gym. Um. Sometimes we do have access to, like, ILM, we had a gym, which was kind of cool. I know EA has their own gym. Sometimes we can, like, businesses in an area to the gym, to a, like, a you know, commercial gym have, like, discounts, but it depends. Tom daily morning workouts and 18 minute workout stretch that does wonders for the lower back. Yeah, doing stuff like yoga and stuff like that is is good. Just stretching in general, like like I'm not kidding, guys. You should definitely look after your bodies when it comes to this sort of stuff because we sit in front of these computers for hours. Uh, what else we need? What are these things?
Oh, whoops. Yeah, have people been enjoying the um, the sort of format? Oh, I just got welcome to the chat, so my Twitch just bugged out. Did I miss anything after the um, the studios pay for a gym? Oh, all right. You guys gonna say like have have people enjoyed this uh this sort of format, or have they people found this sort of content uh, interesting or educational? Because I know this isn't really like a standard uh like modeling tutorial. You miss music? Yeah, we can't play music because we don't have the rights to uh <laughs> we don't have the rights to any of the music, so we can't obviously play anything. You uh, you have to hold that channel. You think it's awesome? Awesome. Yeah, I saw someone, someone on Twitter said, um, <laughs> said since there's no video of me starting from scratch, the, this video is, <laughs> the stream was kind of pointless. I was like, all right. If you want a standard modeling tutorial, you can find plenty of those online. This is more of a um, how the industry actually works. Just joined, what are we making? Um, we're building a... So if this is your first time here... Oh yeah, so I don't have follow... I don't have notifications on at the moment, so I've totally missed lots of follows, but thank you. But um, So we're doing a sponsored stream by Autodesk, where we build a production asset in 30 hours which is not very long at all so it's it was a stream based on you know cutting every corner we can building this uh this vehicle i mean this is only half of it the other half is not here but yeah oh you've been following for a while all right so but yeah this is educational content on um working in the industry which i think is much more valuable than just a modeling tutorial because there's no point in me really just doing another generic modeling tutorial because there's there's so many of those already. Uh, how do you decide what to model for a reveal? Um, I would pick. I would pick something that has like a variety of different materials and like um, a variety of different materials and forms. So one of the things I usually tell people which is a good idea is like a um, like a motorcycle is kind of cool. Like motorcycle you have sleek elegance, you have a lot of the um, like you have a lot of the sleek forms, you have a lot of the uh, mechanical complex details. You also have, what am I saying? You have, you know, the materials with the seat and the handlebars. Like, there's a lot of different materials and, so, like, design languages you need to tackle. So, like, building something like a motorcycle or maybe, like, a car interior just shows you tackling many forms instead of something. Like, don't pick, like, a Lamborghini, like, exterior, because it's just, it's all the same design language. It's very simple. Tutorials make something seem like everything is perfect. Yeah, no, no. I even like, I don't get me wrong. Like, like in the industry, we still make mistakes and things have to be rebuilt and like problems still occur. Like, it's not, it's not like everything just magically works or happens. Um, and go. Oh. 
What is this? Oh, these vents. Oh, I thought I UV'd these things. Oh, I did. They're over there. Oh, okay. I already UV'd it. That's that's very convenient. Yeah, the reason I have this here is like so I know where the top because this thing is symmetrical. So in theory, this should snap down to the correct place. Awesome. So that's why I left this here for this the I left the locator at the center of the engine. So anything I do on the top I can flip down to the bottom much easier. But yeah, when it comes to picking like portfolio pieces, I think it's find something you can get a lot of reference for, something that's quite complex. But the thing is, you don't want something that's so complex, it just looks like a mess. Like I wouldn't bother building like an interior of a submarine or something because it's just so much gack that it just high, it just looks like a mess, visual noise. Where something like, um, you know, like a motorbike has like a nice breakup of like, you know, big sweeping forms and like concentrated sections of like complexity that's why i think the motorbike is always a good example the black hawk <laughs> we always joke about the black hawk is a good thing to pick we uh we lost the uh how much this was kitbashed a decent amount of it was kitbashed so like this is the thing right we only had 30 hours to make this including uvs like 30 hours is no time at all really if you think about it. it it's less than a week to um produce this so we took every shortcut we could we a lot of this stuff is kit bashed we took elements from the concept mesh and we retopologize them like this is kind of how we deal with the tight deadline we we cut every corner we can while still maintaining the quality and we kind of do it in waves of detail so say for example like this isn't finished, the model's still not done, but we know the time limit is running out. So I'm doing the UVs to like of what we have so far to get it into a decent stage. So even if we do run out of time, we can still hand off a finished asset. Because can you imagine, imagine you run out of time, the model is finished, but you haven't touched the UVs yet and you still have another week of UVing to go. Then it just throws everyone else off schedule. Like that's the main thing that about working in production that's different to like working at home is you're you're in production. It's not it's you're not working at home anymore. So what is this? These are the details, right? I might try and just put these all in the same udem. Just shrink it slightly. If it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. Actually, I might just rotate these. When will I know when I have enough content in my reel? Um, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, like applying for a job isn't like you hit X amount of portfolio pieces, boom, you get a job. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Like I know people that got hired without a reel. I, I don't agree with that either, but like there's no, there's no set like achievement of, oh, I have X amount of folio pieces. I can get a job now. So that makes sense. Your portfolio just gives you the best chance of getting a job. Um, you're scared if you apply too early, you jinx yourself. No, I wouldn't worry about that. 
Well, this is the thing, right? If you don't apply for, okay, so let's let's use your your example. You're saying if you see a job opportunity and you don't apply for it because you don't feel ready and you want to do an extra portfolio piece, by the time you do the extra portfolio piece, the job's gone. Like that's it. Like there's no, the job is not going to sit around waiting for you to do another portfolio piece. So you might as well just apply. Like if you apply and you don't get the job, it, it doesn't. It's not like you're suddenly blacklisted now. I mean, unless you, like, threaten people or something. But you, you don't... Just because you apply for a job doesn't mean... And you don't get it doesn't mean you're suddenly blacklisted now or something. Timing, yeah. Everything is timing and luck. If we're, if we're completely real, timing and luck is a big part of everything. Only real artists get blacklisted. That's right. I forgot about that. But yeah, I wouldn't, if you see a job opportunity and you think I'm not going to apply for this because I want to do another portfolio piece first, you're going to just simply miss the job opportunity. Like, they're going to fill it. Like, jobs go pretty quickly. Like, studios need to find people and they usually hire them within, like, the first two weeks. Like, they don't, unless you can do a new portfolio piece in one week. Or even then, you're probably too late. Do you think it's harder to get jobs for recent graduates because of COVID? Oh, I mean, I think it's harder for professionals to get a job as well. It's not, it's not a, like COVID has affected everyone. It's not, I, I know plenty of professionals that don't have jobs. It's just how it, things are at the moment. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not the best time to try and get into the industry. this oh. so question about the engine how do you know if it looks busy enough um which engine like this engine or do you mean like um what do you mean, like an engine for a real motorbike or something? Yeah, references is key to everything. For sure. Yeah, if you guys have any like general questions about the industry, now is definitely the best time to uh, ask it because we're doing UVs. <laughs> and UVs is not the most exciting thing for a lot of people. I, mean, I personally don't mind it. I find this super relaxing. But I know a lot of people really dislike UVs for some. I mean, if you know what you're doing, it's not too bad. You like UVs when it's not in a max. Maya's, um, like Maya's recent UV editor is pretty decent. You find weight painting more annoying? Yeah, I don't, I don't do any weight painting. Myself. So.
Do you have any good texture artists you can recommend following? Not really. I don't really know many texture artists that that have a following. Like I'm not saying I don't know any good texture artists, but I just don't know any good texture artists that have like literally like built uh I don't know, like a an online presence like me sort of thing. Well these mods are terrible. Paul Polino? Yeah. Uh let's see. Yeah, I forgot about Paul. Yeah, you should give Paul a, a follow. I know he disappeared for a bit. Well, not disappeared, but you know, didn't post so much for a while. Yeah. Anywhere I can find inspiration or what to model, like website or random things. Ah, uh, a museum. Museum is the best place. I mean, I don't know how things are with COVID, but if you can go to a mu like physically go to a museum and walk around, you would find many awesome, inspiring things to model. Yeah, I think, yeah, the best place for inspiration is, like, physically go and look at something. Like, especially if you're interested in, like, hard surface stuff, like, go to, like, a, like a war museum or, like, just, like, an aviation museum. And then you can just look at real vehicles. Go to a car show. Actually, I don't know how much of this stuff is even really happening anymore. But, like, in general, that sort of stuff is usually the best. General question I come from a technical background, a computer science engineering graduate to be specific. My area of interest has always been CGVFX, so now it's been one year and I have a grasp of softwares that are be being used in the pipeline and now I'm mainly focused being FX artists, Houdini. Because it's a little bit on the technical side and my programming skills may be put to use, so do you think me having a technical background will fetch me a job easier? Um, wait, so did you, you didn't actually work? In like a technical job, right? You talking about just your, you talking about just your um, your schooling, right? I mean, it still comes down to your portfolio at the end of the day. That that's the main thing. You will mostly be judged on your portfolio. Like schooling, very rarely pops up in the industry. Portfolio is everything. Well, not everything. Connections. Connections and timing and stuff like that, but yeah, I no one has ever asked me where I went to school. And even if I said I'm self-taught, which I am, they probably wouldn't care. What is this? Oh, uh, metaphor edges. Take a camera? I mean, you don't have to take a camera, just use your phone. But obviously, yeah, if you have like a good proper camera, I mean, this is the best thing about, right? So if you go to a museum and you take your own references of vehicles and then you build them, it's much easier for you to line up your references in Maya because you're the one that took the photo and you know the, the camera information. Like if you know the focal length and stuff like that, you can set your cameras up much easier than getting random reference of online. So that's why I suggest if you if you are serious about like building vehicles and stuff from reference, it's much better if you just go take the reference yourself. 
It also means you can take the photos you know you need. Like say for example, it's usually quite hard to see like what a headlight, like in, inside the headlight looks like of a vehicle. But if you go to a museum, you can literally put your camera right in there and look in. You're hired based on your ability to fill a position, yeah for sure. I mean if you do have like a technical like degree or whatever, they might be like, oh that's kind of cool. But it's not going to give you the job if your work is bad. Like that's the, that's the thing to me to think about. Where's the cockpit? Oh, that's the cockpit. Yo, I'll be back in two seconds. Why does that make you depressed? Oh, the quality of the students. You all know me, so you have an inner DNA? I wouldn't say that. <laughs>
He told it. He. Yeah, definitely good luck, but I wouldn't hold too much onto that. Just because, like, someone could, I could say, oh, send me your reel. Doesn't mean I have really much power in hiring someone. Like, that's what I mean. Like, I wouldn't hold too much on those sort of things. If that makes sense. Like, having an in at a studio can help, but it's not like a guarantee of anything. Have I ever done character animation? No, <laughs> I'm not an animator. I haven't done any uh, animation at all. I mean, I've animated groups. That's <laughs> that's the extent of my animation. To demonstrate uh, moving parts. That's about it. But yeah, if someone tells me they'll get me in, I always hold, I always have that with a you know hold that with a grain of salt. Like you don't know what's happening. Environment. If the reel is most important, why would a studio hire a newbie with a good reel over a professional? Uh, cheap. I know that sounds bad, but that's really They're cheaper. Cheaper, but probably slower. I mean, yes, but for example, in a studio, this is the thing, right? You're not like in a studio, you're not constantly building amazing hero stuff. Like there might be a time where someone needs to update the parts library or someone needs to ingest outsourced models and to pay expensive seniors to do like menial tasks like that is a lot of money. So that's why like juniors can get hired to do that sort of stuff, if that makes sense. So even for your, like when you first get hired, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't expect too much to be doing like the hero creature. Like that. And also, like, there's a lot of really good juniors out there now. <laughs> like, that, that's the thing, right? So if you can hire a cheaper junior that can produce the, the same output of, like, a senior that's kind of jaded, I'd just hire the junior for, for half the money. That's why, personally, I think it's... Uh, not good for seniors to kind of get too settled because you cost a lot of money and if you don't really provide anything outstanding it's hard to um you'll probably you'll just get overtaken by the the crazy juniors coming out these days like that's the thing right you have to you, a senior you have to justify your high salary Um, real being important is not the opposite of being a professional. It's the other side of coming from a good school, having a degree. I don't, I don't get why would you bring up professionals in the reels a more important topic. Wait, what? Have studios tried to limit the unneeded VFX to save money, or has stayed con constant just to keep asking for more? I don't know what you're saying. I don't get what you mean by that. I mean, this is a business at the end of the day. Like, you get the work done as fast as possible, as cheap as possible. That's it. <laughs> like, that, that's pretty much all it is. Like, say, for example, we 
we have like uh, 30 days to make an asset, but if you can do it in 20 days, just do it in 20 days and everyone's happy. You don't, don't need to spend the full 30 days on it. Yeah, breaking into the industry is the hardest thing you'll ever do. Once you're in, you're in. Well, unless you screw up. And by screw up, I mean you have to do something really bad. Like, really, really bad. Like, leak things and stuff like that. Ugh. Yeah, just don't leak things. <laughs> that's That's the key. Jeez, what happened to this mesh? Pretty bad. Um, we have no background music because this stream is sponsored by Autodesk, so we have to own the rights of everything we have on the stream, which is why there's no music. So we just don't have auto we just don't have music for the Autodesk streams. That's also why I've picked my own design to make because I own the rights to it. Oops. Yeah, maybe we'll cut the other one off. Wait, what happened here? Oh, whatever, it's fine. Am I going to the textures or just unwrapping? Uh, just unwrapping, because we only have uh, we only have ten streams to do this, so thirty hours. So the fact that we could even get the UVs done is is good, but yeah, we won't be doing everything. I can't texture, by the way. I mean, I'm not a texture artist. Yeah, you just have to deal with the sound of my voice. There's no there's no background music. Do I do freelance on the side? Not really. We can't do that sort of stuff. It depends what you mean though. Like 
I don't know, I, I guess you could technically count this as a form of freelance, but it's not like a form of freelance that competes with my job. That's the main thing. Ugh, what happened here? So you can't do... Um... Oh, I see what it is. Yeah, so it's in our contracts. We can't, com we can't do... Like, you can't work for one company and then freelance for another, if that makes sense. Like a competing studio. But like streaming on Twitch and stuff isn't... Is no problem. I could sing you something. Yeah, that's not happening. Wait, where did? What about mentoring? Um, I did have a patron before. I closed it just because I didn't have the time. Deal with it. That's the main thing. I think, yeah, I don't really do any mentoring or anything at the at the moment. Just because I, I find it much easier just to do the streaming. Like, if people have questions, they can literally just come and ask me here. It just keeps it, just keeps it much easier than trying to juggle so many things at once. Because I, I still have a full-time job. <laughs> and that takes up, obviously, most of my time. And then I have things I want to learn and do in my spare time as well. Why would people be interested in a form of mentorship? I mean, we have like a Discord people can go and post stuff into. The Discord is pretty pretty helpful in that regard. Like, I don't look at it too much just because there's so much that happens. And I am obviously pretty busy. But, you know, I still would pop in every now and then check stuff out. I just realized I haven't saved. <laughs> I, should, I should probably save. Whoops. Don't forget to save your work. Yeah, I know, I just realized. Usually I'm pretty good when it comes to saving. But, whoops. Usually I'm not talking to myself. Yeah, we have about one more hour left. 80% memes, 20% helpful advice. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm more interested in, in the memes on the Discord. Ah, oh, the memes are always fun. It's funny, right? So if I ever post anything on Twitter, I get like maybe like 10 likes or something. And I posted a Maya meme and I got 1.4k likes. I was like, what the f***? Twitter is just about memes. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Yeah, no, right. One hour and four guys time. Yeah, maybe we can do an hour of four guys. Yeah, if people haven't been here before, we just, we usually do like a CG stream and then we do some four guys with the chat after just to you know, unwind from CG goodness. Uh, let's get rid of this. I usually do this stuff quite a lot, like I'll cut off I'll cut off all this extra space we don't actually need. Oh yeah, I need to cap these now.
I usually do automatic UV just to see what it looks like first before I bother doing any of my own custom stuff. And usually it's pretty good. It can, it can get you pretty far. Uh, what is this? Make sure this is going the right direction. Yeah. Do you have any time lapse videos? Would actually like nice to watch. Um, I do have a time lapse video of me making like an axe or something like that. But I mean, watching me stream is like time lapse and normal speed, pretty pretty much. I mean, this is kind of like a live time lapse right now. What else has to be done in the concept panels? I mean, cockpit panels. What is this piece? Oh, yeah. We don't need any of this stuff. Oh yeah, sorry, I totally missed all the follows. But uh, yeah, thanks everyone that's recently been following. I have notifications turned off for the um, for the Autodesk streams just to keep it a bit more professional. And also, we have the chat off the stream because I don't I don't trust the chat. <laughs> to not say silly things. Gun concept? What gun concept? Oh, the axe thing. I never did a gun concept. Oh, you watched it? That's kind of funny. Yeah, that was made a while ago. Yeah, I haven't written any blogs recently either. I was in the process of writing a blog, which I think is going to be quite juicy. The blog is going to be on why VFX studios aren't just suddenly swapping softwares now. I'm sure that's going to light a fire. It will be quite fun. I know. I'm going to apply very logical statements, but I don't know how that's going to go down with using logic. I want to go up, don't I? Not sideways. Do I? That's going the wrong way. Yeah, we'll continue the sideways. It's easier, I guess. you live in the future no, no i mentioned it on stream yesterday i was thinking i was writing it it's just so we don't have to keep having the same conversation every single day this is why i usually write the blogs because people ask me the same questions over and over so i can just link people the blog now that honestly that's one of the reasons why i started writing blogs because i just didn't want to keep repeating myself over and over and just just put it all down in blog form. I'll probably get some spicy replies, probably. <laughs> A lot of arguments, I know. It's gonna be fun, I'm looking forward to it. Professional blogger? You know, we used to write heaps of blogs. 
People used to love the, um... Like, I did a blog series on... Like, working in the industry, which was like... Oh, it was 10,000 words, I think. It was a lot. Every frame of painting makes YouTube videos for that reason. Fair enough. Yeah, channel. What's up with that? Do you make a command or something? Oh, shit. Oh, manual copy and paste. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, maybe should we have a should we have the bot do that? Like have you know saying like thanking the person for following in the chat itself. Because I know some streamers have that. Yeah, we have four thousand nine hundred thirty-eight followers. We're almost at five k. That's pretty. That's pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah, many thanks to all the people that have been tuning in. I never thought my Twitch stream would have 5k followers. Or hit Twitch partner. I didn't see that coming. I don't know why I'm UVing this. I should probably fix the topology first. There's not many artists like me around. I guess. Yeah, not many people really use Maya on Twitch. Or have industry experience. Three D is not the most common. Oh yeah, there's no there's no um 3D is really rare, I think. Nice guy. I I guess I'm okay. Uh, where is this? Oh, we didn't cut it off, did we? Whoops. Nice guys finished last. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's fix this stuff. I don't even know why I did that. I have to get I have to get rid of it now. Oh one of the convenient things is if you do your UVing, you can use your UVs as your selection. So we can get rid of that. All right, let's let's probably. Um. Oh shit! It's beveled, isn't it? Yeah, maybe it's not best to get rid of it. Best just to deal with the cards we've been dealt from the uh, the concept mesh. Cool. Get out of the way, cursor. Are you still doing follow goals? Um, we don't have sub goals at the moment because we've been focusing on this. We like all the handstands and stuff. We can still do that stuff after the stream is done. I mean, after the um, after the Autodesk stuff is done, like that will all come back once Autodesk streams are yeah done. Like, don't worry, you can still save your points to um to make me do handstands and stuff later so random wait what am i doing uh, let's get rid of those i mean ideally we would have done one side and then just extruded but because the edge is kind of beveled i already i don't have that option in 
Because if I extrude it and it's beveled, it will like curve in on itself. Which is not good. Good enough. If I may ask, how familiar am I with ZBrush? Uh, I have very limited ZBrush experience, but that's something I'm in the process of fixing right now. So I've been doing ZBrush stuff in my own time. Primarily, primarily, uh, primarily focusing on like hard surface stuff though. Yeah, I'm not that experienced with ZBrush. That's something that's always been a, a hole in my toolset, which I actively am trying to fix now. Wait, why is this not working? Whew. Ooh, that's not good. But yeah, I think ZBrush is definitely something you need to know. It's something I don't know why I held off from it so long. I found, I guess I found the interface quite intimidating, I guess. And I just usually just don't get assigned ZBrush work at work. So I never really was in the opportunity to like, where well, I was forced to use it, if that makes sense. Like the thing, right, at work, like people know me for doing like spaceships and stuff like that. So I always just get assigned the spaceship. Like I very rarely get this assigned the ZBrush task. So I just never really learned ZBrush. Like I would have to do ZBrush in my own time. Uh, which is what I'm doing now. I'll be able to do more ZBrush work if I show them I can use it. Uh, I don't think so. It's not necessarily that they don't trust me to be use ZBrush. It's more that what I usually get assigned isn't ZBrush based work. It's like very rarely would you have to take something like this into ZBrush. That's me. What I that's more what I mean. Is Autodesk sponsorship real or is it a meme? It's a it's real. I wouldn't I wouldn't slap Autodesk in the corner and put it in the title if it wasn't real. They um they came across the stream a few months ago and reached out and said they liked what I was doing, and they offered to sponsor ten streams. So yeah, it's it's a real thing. I'm not, it's not just a meme. There. Save it before we do this. I think it would probably put me in trouble as well if I if I was announcing I'm like okay so just a heads up like I, I don't work for Autodesk and like I'm not an employee or Autodesk and I don't represent them this is purely like 10 streams being sponsored by them so I'm not I don't work for Autodesk that's pretty much one way of putting it. 
But yeah, I'm sure I could get in trouble if I said I the stream was sponsored by Autodesk and it wasn't. But it is, so we're, we're all good. Yeah, if, the, if there's one piece of advice I could give people, it's be honest about what you do. Because that sort of stuff does come back to bite you. Like, I, I know people that have, like, in their demo reel had assets that I made. And then the soup asked me about it, like, oh, did you, how was it to work with this guy? And I was like, I've never even worked with the guy. <laughs> so, like, that sort of stuff does come back to bite you. And big surprise, they just didn't include, they didn't bother considering the guy. Yeah, it happens quite a lot. People will put, um, people will, will exaggerate their demo reels. And then if you happen to go to a studio where someone worked on the asset, uh, you're kind of in trouble. Like this is the thing, right? This is, I mean, this is the reality of the industry. Say for example, I I spend I don't know three four months building this crazy complex vehicle, and then I hop off the show, I do something else, and then another artist has to come in and delete this pipe. They they technically can put this on their demo reel, <laughs> and sometimes people are not very honest about what they did. They would just put like vehicle modeling, and not mention that they literally like. For me, if I was in that position, I wouldn't even mention I worked on the asset. Like, say, for example, the very first thing I ever did in the industry was I painted out white dots on Godzilla for the first Godzilla film. And I didn't even mention Godzilla on my... It's not on my IMDb or anything like that. Because I, I didn't feel I put enough like a substantial effort into the asset to claim it. I think it's always best to be careful. Like, even if you... Even if someone did do that and then put it their demo reel, I, I actually would it would really annoy me. But like, at least put like I don't know minor adjustments like in the corner or something. Like be honest about what you did because like people talk, people know who make these things. Like that stuff that stuff spreads super quickly. There's a guy who applied to Valve almost like that. His career was over. <laughs> this is the thing, right? If if they're lying in their demo reel, how can you trust them, <laughs> like, at all? Like, that's the thing, right? You got you got to be careful with that sort of stuff. That's why you'll notice on my demo reel, even if I was like the main like the main modeler on the asset, I usually just put part of modeling team. Like, even if I did, like, 70% of the work, I usually just put part of modeling team. Just, it just keeps it generic and simple. But then when I have the actual interview, I can explain what I did on the asset. Do I remember the first asset I made in the industry? Um, the first asset I guess I had pretty decent ownership of was the uh, the five seater Ravager from Guardians of the Galaxy. But like the first asset I made from scratch, which was like I kind of had pretty decent ownership of, was Rocket's Warbird. It was this thing, this thing from the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Except this is the thing, right? I, I built this one for the film. And then the director took the wings off. So this is what's in the film. Did I do an interior? No, I didn't do the interior. Since the interior is very similar between Rocket's ship... I mean, since it's all part of the same fleet, we could reuse elements of, like, the Milano and stuff. Because it's the same ship, pretty much. Did they test my modeling skills when you got in the industry? If yes, what did they have to model? I mean, that's the thing, like, you start off small. 
Like the very first thing I did on the Ravager was I had to... So the Ravager was pretty much the Milano, but we added some guns to it. And then in the end, we ended up replacing 70% of the model. So it started off as just a small refinement, but they saw I could handle it. And they kind of just gave me more and more of the ship to model. So yeah, they won't just give you the craziest shit, like, immediately. Like, they, they did test me. Oh yeah, for sure, you have to learn the pipelines. But the thing was, like, so I was a runner at the time at NPC. So I used my spare time to learn the pipeline. So I already had a pretty decent understanding of the pipeline before, um, before I actually started modeling or working, I guess. RIP NPC Yelltown. I never was there. I was at NPC London. For a stream with no music, 95 viewers is pretty good. For, for a stream in Maya, 95 viewers is pretty good as well, for sure. Do you get front side view of model or is it just a concept art? Uh, it depends. Every, every single asset you make is completely different. You have no idea what you're going to get. Because concept artists can do whatever they want. All the concept artist cares about is the image. So we always get the image and then whatever they use to make the image. It depends, like if, like for example, if you work with something from Vitali or um, Fausto Di Martini, you'll get like a nice proper like concept mesh. But not everyone does a nice proper concept mesh, so it depends. There's no, there's no specific way how it happens. I'm sure everyone's just here for the the brightly coloured polygon. You don't get the appeal of music on streams, it's much nicer to choose your own music and volume. Yeah, for sure, that makes sense. I think it's just because people like being exposed to new music. I think that's pretty much it. Like, I've found some cool music l listening to other people's streams. I think people like that appeal of just discovering new music at the same time. Yeah, so what? What is all this stuff here? Detail. Oh, that's that on the front. Okay. In the studio, do you always go with linear UVs or smooth UVs? If it's hard service, as I mean, I don't know what you mean by linear or smooth UVs. Um, we have the copper panels, L main body, details all over the place. Um, I hear a lot of VFX artists complaining about having to work overtime and even on weekends for no extra bonus and this being common in the industry. Is it true? It depends where you work. So in Canada, we get paid overtime. It's true, you might have to do some over, like decent amount of overtime. It depends what department you're at, depends what your studio is. It depends on a lot of factors. There's no yes or no answer to that question. It depends where you are. I just auto pack all this stuff together.
Rip London? Yeah, London you don't get paid overtime, which sucks. Like, you can work in the same company in London and Vancouver, and the Vancouver guys will get overtime, but the London people won't. It's not the studios, it's, the, it's like the laws of like the city itself. That's one reason why I would find it hard to go back to London after moving to Vancouver. London's expensive as hell, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I started in London as a runner. I know how hard it can be to live in that country, in that city, I mean. Yeah. What was your living situation in London back then? Um, I lived in a cardboard, not cardboard box. I lived in a shoebox with three other random people. With like, like, my own apartment, well it's not my own, but like the apartment I live in in Vancouver is as big as the apartment I shared with three people. You gotta run? Thanks for tuning in, man. I'll uh, catch you later. Oh, no, I deleted the thing. Whoops. Yeah, living in London is hard, especially like when you're first starting off your career. It can be quite, quite difficult. Oh, we just turn it off. Australia have good VFX industry. Um, it's starting to. It didn't when I was back in Australia. It's definitely starting to now, though. Like ILM opened there. Oh, shit. I think Rising Sun is. Ooh, what is that? I think Rising Sun is doing quite well. Now, with COVID stuff, do you work from home? Yeah, work from home. I don't see us going back to work anytime soon, especially with like second waves and stuff like that starting. Um, <sighs> what are companies waiting? Wait, what are companies waiting to come to France? There's near n nothing here. Uh, tax incentives. Like, studios exist entirely on tax incentive. So, if France offers good tax incentives, studios will go there. That's it. That's, that's literally the only reason why studios exist in places. is for tax incentives. Like France has really good schools. Like, uh, what's the what's the main one in France? You always see their stuff everywhere. It's not Alt VFX or something, is it? Uh, it wasn't those two, but yeah, Alt. I you see like Alt pumps out heaps of crazy students. Is it Alt? Am I thinking of the right one? Uh, 
Wait, why do I think it's old? New 3D Edge? I don't even think I've heard of those. Yeah, what's the other one? Artifacts. Why did I think it was old? Yeah, Artifacts pumps out. I knew it started with A, that's the only thing I realized. And it was three letters. Yeah, Artifacts pumps out heaps of amazing students for VFX every year. Like, their, their student reels are amazing. But then what happens is they all just move to London. <laughs> That's the thing, right? I I met so many French VFX artists in London. And now they're all in Vancouver. There's so many VFX, like French VFX artists here. Um, I mean body detail. What is this? Oh, what's this? Uh... Schools that will make you poor. I mean, depends. If this, if you actually get like really good quality schooling out of it, I think it's worth it. If the school is trash, that's that's a problem though. Wait, what is this? Oh, it's that stuff. We're not gonna we're not gonna name schools on the stream that are trash though. We have to be nice about that sort of stuff. Um. Uh, do you use Wacom for multiple screens? If so, how do you go between screens? Yeah, I use the Wacom. I only have one screen though. I have an ultra wide monitor. But I mean, at work, I have multiple screens, and it. I don't know why it would be different. It just means it's a bit more sensitive, I guess. How is this looking so far? It's looking quite nice. We are starting to become quite organized. Do you guys think it's worth to make an art station post with a bunch of random assets and kit pieces that I made over the years? I mean, if you want, like us posting on art station doesn't really change anything, I don't think. I might do this actually. So see how I have like engine on one side and main on the other? Maybe I might swap these over. So at least like one side is. Well, actually, there's that there, isn't there? All right. Put that here. Get this away. But how do you map screens on the tablet? The ratio between screen and the tablet are really different. <laughs> I just assume it's more sensitive. Like, I'm not looking down at my tablet while I'm drawing, so it doesn't really bother me. Yeah, I'll probably do this. So the engine is on one side, and the uh, the main body's on the other. All right, I won't read their name on stream, but all right, we'll listen to you. <laughs> Ooh, what's the youngest person you've ever seen at DNEG? Probably Andrew, if Andrew's still lurking around. You want to say how old you are? It's up to you. You don't obviously have to. Seventeen. Twenty one? Yeah, twenty one. Like I'm thirty one, there's a ten year age gap between us. Damn, I wish I got into the industry at twenty one. I um I got into the industry twenty four, I think. Ooh. Yeah, check out Andrew's stuff, it's really cool. 
Um, let's see, what is this? I know this hasn't been the most exciting stream. I am, I'm kind of surprised we have 95 people here watching me do... <laughs> watching me organize UVs. That's quite impressive. If I'm completely honest. What is all this stuff? Oh. I'm sure everyone is totally here for the, the lovely UVs. What's this? Oh, that's the paneling. Um, where's the other panels? Uh, panels. I'll probably just add these to the top here. You're here for the music. Of course you are. You're here for the, the ASMR. What's this? Oh, that's the detail, isn't it? Alright. Details can probably go up here somewhere. Santa is just chilling at the moment, doing whatever it wants. Hey, why can't I select it? What is this? Oh, okay. Uh, I couldn't select it for some reason. Oh, that's the glass. I was wondering why I couldn't, wondering why I couldn't select it. Then I realized it's set to reference. All right, fair enough. I was wondering what this mysterious object was. Let's just UV this. This will be super quick. Ugh, not like that though. To be fair, we can probably get rid of the bottom. Won't really need it. Oh. Why is it not... Alright. We'll just re-extrude it then. Hydration break? Oh, I have water. Hmm. We only have 20 minutes left of the stream anyway. And then we can do some full guys if people want. I know the chat likes to linger and play full guys after. For an hour or so. Hearing stuff like I'm 21 and got into the industry is a bit depressing since you might think you're a failure for not doing so, but remember that everyone's path is different and there is no... Not like you can't get a job anymore if you didn't make it by 20. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, the famous story of Matha Narita, who was a, an accountant, I think, for 20 years, and then he swapped and is now one of ILM's best hot surface modelers. And he made like the Star Destroyer, the Millennium Falcon, and all this other crazy shit. So, yeah. It's never too late, for sure. Um, I'm going to get rid of... Because if I extrude this down with that bevel there, it'll go a bit wonky. So we're going to do it without the bevel. Oh, who did it? Oh yeah, of course, the bevel's still here. Oops.
The best thing is since we UV'd the top before we did it, now we already have both of them. Kind of UV'd for us, which is handy. Oh, not that way. Flipped it. Oh no, we just broke it. Oh no, we didn't. Camper. Oh. How inconvenient. I guess oh, maybe we shouldn't chamfer it. Just add the edge loop in. To be fair, this isn't going to move that far. Bullshit. And we can't see it anyway. Probably fine. Did you study? Uh, nope, I'm self-taught. Yeah, I learned by just making a lot of mistakes at home. <laughs> and a lot of trial and error. Get the glass out of the way. So the glass always goes by itself. Oh shit, I put it on top of it. Yeah, so if you didn't, what is this? Oh, it's the cockpit. So yeah, if you if you didn't go to school, like don't don't be too worried. Like no one no one cares about your schooling. Like let's be real, your schooling is completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters is your portfolio, and your connections, of course. But like you know, both of those things can help. Like the school can help you get the portfolio and the connections. What is all this? Oh, this stuff. Okay. The L main body. Ooh. Yo, how's it going? Welcome to the stream, Conan. My security bot is dope. What do you mean, my security dot? My security bot is dope. How many hours a day? Oh, Andrews. All right, never mind. I get you. I was wondering what you were talking about. You know what? Personally, as long as there is not election only because I come from nah, no one g honestly no one gives a shit where what school you come from if you have a bad demo reel no one's gonna be like oh well they came from this school that they must be good it does, doesn't work that way there's plenty of bad students from good schools for sure yeah so 40 yeah, your schooling is kind of irrelevant. That one. You want to do lighting at Pixar and you refuse to go to Gobelins? How come? Why would you refuse to go there? Um, I, I personally wouldn't like. It's nice to have goals and stuff like that, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be that specific. Like, I would be like, I want to be a lighting artist in the animation industry. I would think that first. Like, I wouldn't get too caught up on. I must get to this studio. If that makes sense. To be fair, like a lot of the times you get to these studios and they're probably not like what you thought they were either. So I wouldn't get too caught up on like the specific studios. 
I mean, it doesn't it doesn't hurt to have goals and stuff like that, though. So if you want to go to Pixar, yeah, for sure, keep it a, keep it as a goal, but don't don't think like I'll turn down every other job because I want Pixar. If that makes sense. Oh, these were all merged together. That makes sense. You said Pixar because they're known to get, to get a lot of students out of Goblin since it was a topic I mentioned. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's not like... It's not like these studios have agreements with studios that they'll pick up their students, if that makes sense. Like, if their students aren't good, they're just not good. That's... Oops. There's always way too much traditional art for my taste though. Okay. Well, to be fair, for our job, I don't think traditional art matters at all. Like, like if you're, a, if you're a modeler, that you show me your traditional drawing, I wouldn't care. Like, it, it doesn't mean anything to our job. Like, maybe if you're a concept artist, maybe, but not, not for, like, our job. Like, if you're a lighting artist and you have traditional art, it literally adds nothing, I don't think. Oh, that's part of that one. But that's just my take. Other people might disagree with me. But like, if if I'm hiring you for a lighting position, all I care about is your lighting skills. I'm not a lighter though, so... Take what I say with a grain of salt. So I've, that's like the most common question. I, I've, it's like, it's, that's too kind of simple to answer. Like it's, it's not specific enough. If that makes sense. Like, I don't know where I would start to say, to give you advice of where to start. Like, like start doing what? That's, that's more what I mean. I guess the best general advice is find out what you enjoy doing and then Go after it and don't give up on it. Don't take the easy road, I guess. <sighs> oh yeah, I, I saw what you meant. Have fun. Well, I mean, this is the thing, right? If you're going to be stuck doing this thing, if you're going to be stuck doing this 10 hours a day, you better hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> like... Like, this is why I, I do spaceships and stuff at work, is because I, I enjoy making spaceships. Like, I wouldn't... If I got stuck doing... Um, if I was in a studio and they... They stuck me doing layout, I would probably get bored and leave. Just because that's not what I want to do. Like, definitely find what you enjoy doing. I mean, there's people out there that love doing layout, but that's just not me. Um, where's the center? Center there. Okay.
That's it. Find what you like doing and get after it. Do it every day and everything will fall. Yeah, exactly. Like if you if you really enjoy it, you're not gonna you're not gonna have a problem with doing it every day. Like I I've been in the industry for like eight years now, and I still enjoy doing this every day. Like I've never. Like, you know, people usually complain about, oh, it's Monday, and you know, the weekend is gone, like, all that sort of stuff. I've, I've never woken up on a Monday and be like, damn, I wish it was still the weekend. Because I just get to go to work and make spaceships. Don't get me wrong, it's not like there's no rough days. But, overall, I'm still enjoying what I get to do. And I think that's one of the most important things. You gotta find what you enjoy doing. Like, there's a reason why I don't do creature work. I don't enjoy. I don't care about creatures. <laughs> like, that's the thing. But I really enjoy vehicles. I like doing vehicles and stuff. Oh, so we got we have nine more minutes left, and then we're done for the stream today. But yeah, overall, I think like the ship's looking pretty cool. Like if we wanted to, we could technically wrap it up now. Like we have UVs for most of the stuff done already. What is this stuff? Roster, okay. What is this? Oh, details. All right, we can probably just. There's not that much of it. We can probably just stick it on. Also, save. Yeah, I've been saving. Don't worry. a render of it uh, i don't know i don't know if we'll get to rendering within the time frame so usually when it comes to doing renders and stuff at work usually we have templates already set up for us that will we use to demonstrate the work so i don't really like at work i don't set up my own lighting scenes or anything like that like if i do the turntable i just import the turntable to whatever render engine we use in the studio and then i uh press the button <laughs> i import the model and press the button <laughs> And that's pretty much my extent of lighting and rendering at work. Do you do turntables for dailies? Depends. Like if you want something to show quick, like just a quick thing, you can just do play blast from Maya. But if you are finishing the model and it's going for like approval, then that's when you do renders. Because you have to see how it actually looks within like proper lighting and stuff. Is it going up? Yeah, it's still going up. Um, school made you hate being a VFX artist. That sucks. You learn everything by yourself after and love it so far. I'm not in the industry as long as Andrew, but it's fine. I'm always happy to wake up on Monday morning, place my lights, and solve stupid shit. Yeah, for sure. Do you usually prefer to give the same amount of UV task space to every piece of the ship? Yes, definitely. Or do you prefer to scale them according to their importance? I always, like, for example, in film, we don't have UV tile limitations. So I, it's much easier on the texture artist if everything is just unified. It just makes everyone's life easier having everything unified. Camel clock, I guess. Wait, did this go up? It didn't go up. I thought I pressed the button. There we go. Yeah, it's not finished yet, but it's looking kind of cool so far. Everything's nice and organized and stuff. Yeah, so personally, this is how I think is the best way of doing UVs. Is that so you go in 
Like, it's okay to have gaps and stuff like this. Like, we go in, like, every second row. So it's, like, left, right, left, right. So every time we modify one piece of geometry on the right side, we can just delete it, flip the left side across, and then move everything up once. And we know everything's always going to line up because it's always just a copy of whatever's below it. And then the center geometry always just goes by itself. I usually don't bother putting these on different, like the center, I don't usually bother putting on different rows for materials based on because there's so few. Unless there's obviously many because then you can do more. But yeah, don't be too worried about your UDEM count. I mean, it depends on the asset, depends on how close it's seen. Like I, I've worked on assets with like 300 UDEMs before. If you need the 300 UDEMs, you need the 300 UDEMs. That's just how it is. Also, thanks for the answer. And so it was limited one person resources. Would you also recommend to keep it as close to industry standard or go for an even option? Industry. I mean, if you want to go in the end, like this is the thing, right? If you're, if you're the texture artist, you can do whatever the hell you want. But if you want to work in industry where someone else is going to be texturing it, it's always best to consider nice organized UVs for them. Yeah, it's all the same texture density. So this means like you can procedurally, because this thing, right, so much stuff is procedurally textured in work, right? So it means you can procedurally texture everything consistently because everything has the same resolution. Do I have an early version to compare? I mean, we've done multiple streams, so I'm sure you can just go check the VODs and that will, will let you know. You don't suck, 128k is better. I have no idea what 128k is. But yeah, we've got uh, ooh, three minutes left. And uh, yeah, so we'll have... We have two more streams left of this. I'm thinking I'll just do the streams on Saturdays for the Auditor streams, just because we have a lot more viewers. And since we're at the end, we might as well... It's better to bring people on when we have... I mean, it's better to do the Autodesk stuff when lots of people are here. So, Wednesday won't be Autodesk streams anymore. It'll just be the next two Saturdays. So the ship itself is in a pretty good position. Like, say, for example, like, suddenly, I don't know, client is like, it's approved. Wrap it up. We can just wrap this thing up, like, in an hour or so and just send it off. We're done. We don't have to worry about it. We're in a very strong position. To be fair, we could probably grab those two and put them here if we wanted, but it doesn't matter doing something like this. I might do that later, actually. Maybe I might put those two down here and move this across. So it's a bit more compact. But yeah, does anyone have any, any last minute questions? For the last minute, like literally last minute. Then we, uh, then we end the stream and play some Fall Guys. <sighs> Oops. Thing. Render engines don't like huge texture files. It's also why it's better to do UDEM. We save two to four hours of render just to downside texture to 1K instead of 4K. Oh, okay. How much do I make a year? <laughs> Jesus. I'm late to the party, but the earlier Autodesk streams, did you go over how you concepted everything? Uh, I didn't do concept earlier stream. I did... I st so the earlier streams were about how we took the concept mesh and we kind of thought about turning it into a production mesh. <sighs> but, um... Yeah, so this is going to be the end of the Autodesk stream. I'm going to end the stream. And then just restart again, and we're going to play some Fall Guys. So, if people want to, you know, hang around, talk some shit, and watch us, we can get we can get the chat in. We usually get the chat into Fall Guys, which is pretty fun. But yeah, if you want to hang around for a bit longer, I'll uh, I'll be back in two seconds. But uh, yeah, aside from that, thanks for tuning in for the uh, the audio streams. <laughs>